Hello. In a previous lab, you used algebra to massage some relationships to convert data that wasn't a line into something that looked like a line so that we could use all of our tools of linear fitting to learn something new from the data we had. While this is a technique that's used in the literature to linearize data, a far more common approach is actually to use logarithms to linearize data. Now, you might have wondered when you first learned about logarithms and pre-calculus what they were good for. Well, it turns out they're used a lot in the scientific literature to convert data that's not a line into something that is a line so that we can understand it. There are two basic ways you can do this. The so-called log lin plot, where instead of plotting y versus x, you plot the logarithm of y versus x, and the log log plot, where you plot the logarithm of y versus the logarithm of x. Both of these get used and have sort of different uses in different contexts. Let's explore each of these in a particular example so that we can see what they're good for. In the case of a log lin plot, a good set of data to understand these is the number of COVID-19 cases in the United States in March 2020, according to the WHO. When you plot these, the result is this exponential looking curve. Now, we don't know how to fit exponentials. However, if instead of on the vertical axis, I take the number of cases and instead plot the logarithm of the number of cases. Here I've done the natural logarithm, so log base e, where e is 2.71, blah, 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 blah. If I do the natural logarithm of the number of cases versus the date, the result is a nice straight line. And we know how to fit straight lines. So we could fit these data using the tools that we have and use that to learn something about what to do next. Another example, and an example of the log-log plot, is the so-called Klebler's law, which is an empirical relationship between the metabolic rate of organisms, P, and their mass, M. The relationship is P equals A, M to the B, where A is some constant of proportionality that has to be measured from the data, and B is the power of this power law. Thomann et al. looked at this relationship in planarians, also known as flatworms, and the, their result shown here is not linear. I've drawn a uh, ordinary least squares best fit line to really show you that these data are not linear. However, if instead of plotting the metabolic rate versus the mass, we instead plot the logarithm of the metabolic rate versus the logarithm of the mass, here I'm using logarithm base 10, we can see that the result is a nice, beautiful straight line. And once again, we know how to deal with those. It turns out from the properties of logarithms, which are reviewed in a latter section, that the slope of this line is the constant B, the power in Klebler's law. And the intercept of this line is B times the logarithm of A. And so from this, we can actually figure out both B and A. Now it turns out that for reasons we don't fully understand, that B is basically 0 0.75 over a huge range of species. From basically bacteria to humans, the power B in Klebler's law is 0 0.75. I personally think that this is really interesting and kind of cool. There are a lot of different explanations for it. Uh, one of them is in this reference that you can see at the bottom of the screen. But I would encourage you to go have a look at it, but it's just a cool example of how you can use a log log plot to learn something. In addition to learning how to use logarithms to linearize data, we're also going to, in this lab, go beyond just thinking about how many standard deviations are we from a certain value or, you know, guessing sort of statistical significance. We're going to take it a diff one more step. We're going to do what is called a Z test, Z is in zebra, where we convert the number of standard deviations into a probability. And so we'll be able to say, you know, what's the probability of us being this far off of this result if we are 2.5 standard deviations away or 1.7 standard deviations away? What's the probability of that? So that's another thing that we're going to introduce in this lab.
So this concludes this video and let's get started.